Hi everybody, welcome to video number seven. By this point, you may know that we have a variety of different igneous rocks on Earth. We've got mafic rocks, we've got felsic rocks, and everything in between. You might also know that those igneous rocks are all derived from a single source. That source is Earth's mantle. It's this 3,000 kilometer thick storehouse of the silicate rock that was left behind after Earth's big differentiation event. So one of the interesting questions is, how did we get such a variety of igneous rocks on Earth's surface if it all came from a single source in the mantle that's basically pretty homogeneous? And the answer to that question is this process of partial melting. So in this video, we're going to go through how you make crust, Earth's crust, through the process of partial melting. So the video will have three parts. First, we'll talk about what are the two types of crust. Then we'll talk about what is partial melting. And then from there, we'll launch off on looking at how partial melting creates crust of a different composition, specifically oceanic and continental crust. So the two types of crust are oceanic and continental. They're different in a lot of ways, but in this video, we're going to just highlight the compositional differences. Oceanic crust is made up mostly of basalt, which is a mafic rock, so it has a lot of iron, magnesium, and calcium. Whereas continental crust um, is made of a lot of things, but we often approximate it as being made of granite. That's not totally true, but it's, a, it's an approximation. Um, granite is a felsic rock. Um, which is largely created at subduction zones. Okay, and it turns out these are going to be the two places where we have a lot of partial melting going on, spreading ridges and subduction zones. And that's where we create oceanic crust and continental crust. So what is this process of partial melting? We'll start with a very simple example. Partial melting is when you take a rock, for example, mantle peridotite, and that rock is made of different minerals. So in this example, we've got a purple, a red, and a green mineral. When we partially melt the rock, it means that we selectively melt one of those minerals, or maybe a couple. And those are the minerals usually that melt at the lowest temperature. So in this example, let's say the green mineral melts at a low temperature. So it's the first one to start melting. And that melt is then drawn off into a magma. Okay, Now the key idea here is this magma doesn't have a composition that's equal to the original rock. It has a composition that's equal to whatever was in the green mineral only. So the magma has a different composition from the source rock. And of course, most of the rock is left behind. Let's look what that looks like. The rock after partial melting also has a different composition. It has its original composition minus whatever was drawn off during partial melting. Okay. So the key idea here is that partial melting lets us extract magma of a new composition um, that's different from the old rock. Now let's go on and look at how that magma can then cool and become rock of a different composition. So how are we going to create new rock? Here's the deal. Step one, we just did. That was partial melting. So we took a source rock, and we partially melted it, OK? And we made a magma. That was step one. Now that magma has to actually cool down and crystallize and become a new igneous rock. And along the way, there's also a process called fractional crystallization. You don't need to note that now. That's going to come up in a future video but just keep this whole process in mind. Today, we're focusing on this piece of partial melting um, and creating this new magma that's now going to cool and be a new igneous rock. OK, so let's look at some locations where partial melting happens and where new crust is created. Um, the first location is beneath ocean spreading ridges. OK, we, you may know about this from previous videos. Uh, but mantle peridotite is convecting. It comes up beneath the spreading ridge, 
um, and it melts, it, it partially melts to be specific, and creates a magma with a new composition. That magma is going to cool and form basalt, which is basically oceanic crust. Okay, um, So this is happening under a mid-ocean spreading ridge. And now let's look at the chemistry of this process. Okay. So here's our uh, rock and mineral chart that you saw in a previous video, hopefully. And we're going to start with the rock peridotite. That's what the mantle's made of. And keep, keep in mind, this has roughly 21% silica. That's very low, which makes this actually an ultra-mafic rock. <laughs> it's not even mafic, it's ultra-mafic. Um, now, what are we going to melt? Let's go ahead and melt some pyroxene and maybe a little plagioclase also. So we're going to melt a little of these two minerals, which have the lowest melting temperatures. And we're not going to melt the olivine. Okay. Now it turns out these minerals have a little bit more silica in them than the, than the bulk rock does. These rocks have about 25% silica. So when we, when we make that melt and we cool that melt back down, it's actually going to crystallize basalt which has also roughly 25% silica. Okay, So the key idea, we took the peridotite, we selectively melted a little pyroxene and a little plagioclase, then we, crisp, we cooled that melt and we made basalt, which is now uh, actually a little bit more felsic than the peridotite, but we would still actually classify it as a mafic rock. So just to hit home the key point again, we created a new rock, basalt, by partially melting this source rock. Um, and that is how new oceanic crust is born that has a different composition than its parent. OK, so let's look now at a second location where partial melting takes place. And that is a subduction zone. Here at subduction zones, we have oceanic crust, which is mostly basalt, um, diving down into the mantle. Uh, as it goes down, it gets heated, and we start to melt specific minerals within the ocean crust. We also start to melt uh, the sediment that was riding on top of that crust. Okay. So we're going to have another episode of partial melting where we melt where we melt specific minerals out of the sediment and out of the oceanic crust. And the resulting magma has a composition that is now more felsic than its parent oceanic crust, okay? And that felsic magma is going to rise up. Um, it can either cool internally and become a coarse-grained rock like perhaps an andesite, excuse me, diorite or it can be erupted and become a fine-grained rock like an andesite. So the key point is that, once again, a second episode of partial melting is siphoning off more felsic minerals in a more felsic melt and creating continental crust that is now going to be more felsic than the oceanic crust that's left behind. So just to look at this in terms of our rock and mineral chart, Here's the oceanic crust, the basalt that goes down. It's fairly mafic. We're going to melt uh, one or more of these minerals. Then we're going to crystallize that melt back. And we're going to end up with an intermediate rock, either a diorite or an andesite, depending whether it cools internally or externally. So to summarize all of this, the continental crust is very felsic. That means it's rich in silica, sodium, and potassium. And it is that way because of these repeated episodes of partial melting. And as it turns out, this doesn't have to just happen once. The rock cycle ensures that this happens multiple times. For example, um, as new felsic rocks like diorite or andesite are erupted or emplaced at a subduction zone, those sediments are then going to be eroded and washed into the ocean. And they're going to go back down the subduction zone a second time, at which point they'll be partially melted again. And we will extract an even more uh, felsic melt out of them. So by this repeated 
episodes of partial melting, we can continue to make the continental crust more and more felsic, more and more rich in silica, sodium, and potassium. So in review, this video had three parts, and we've got three corresponding concept questions. The first part was about the difference between continental and oceanic crust. The second part was how partial melting works. So in other words, why does melt created by partial melting have a different composition than its parent material? Or can you explain partial melting? And then this last long part of the video talked about where partial melting occurs and how this process has made the continental crust more felsic over time. So I'd like for you to be able to explain how that process works and how it made the crust more felsic. Thanks, everybody. See you in class.